Well, it looks like we are live. Uh, it's good to see everybody. Uh, my name is Fabian Rodriguez. Many of you may know me, many of you may not know me, but it is definitely exciting to be back in the saddle, behind the microphone, talking to a bunch of really cool people to get into a brand deep dive on this partnership between uh, the newly established Myriad Fitness and Kodo Design. Myriad um, Health and Fitness. Myriad Come Health on, and man. Fitness. Thank you. Come on, Fabian. You're good. Get with I mean, it. We, that's a qualifier <laughs> that took three weeks to figure out. So it's really important. <laughs> and, and we're going to get into it. We're definitely going to nerd out. Um, just a little bit of background on me. And this isn't about me, but just want to give a little bit about who I am. My name is Fabian. Jared and I met several years ago, started and launched the Drink Culture podcast and have been doing podcasts for, for quite some time and uh, have been a member at previously Naptown, now Myriad Health and Fitness. I, I had to go back into my Instagram timeline to see exactly how long I've been a member. And it goes back to late 2012, which is crazy. Uh, and when we get into things about community and brand and like identity and how that all plays in, I think it, you guys have done a great job and that's why I've been there for so long. Uh, but anyways, that, that's who I am. Uh, I am joined on the Myriad Health and Fitness side by Jared Bisco, who is an owner, uh, visionary there, and Kimberly Hoffman, the CMO there. Hello, both of you. Hey there. Appreciate you doing this. Um, I did want to throw in really quickly then I'm sure Isaac will, will say it, but he actually beats you on being uh, one of the original members of, I do. of, of CrossFit Naptown, the original name and brand. Um, but I'm sure he'll kind of give that little introduction as well. And then uh, Kimberly, when did, tell your story. Yeah, so I joined the Myriad team about a year ago, uh, was previously in the events industry for about nine years and have been pretty involved in the rebrand uh, project since that started. So excited to kind of relive everything that we've been over the last year. Awesome. And from the Kodo side, we've got Isaac Arthur and Cody Fag. Gentlemen, great to see you both again. Hey, Fabian. Hello. Yeah, should we introduce ourselves? I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here flat-footed. <laughs> Probably. I didn't want to talk over you, but yeah, I don't, probably. I, I'll save the how we got connected, CrossFit, me almost dying story for a minute from here. Uh, Kodo is, Cody, we're almost 12. I, I had yeah, to redo the math. Yeah, that's freaky. That's wild. So this July 25th will be a 12-year, so we're an angsty 11-year-old right now, <laughs> uh, food and beverage branding firm based in Indy. It's really great that we're working with the gym because generally we're working against that type of stuff <laughs> with our, our other work. Um, Cody and I graduated uh, from college in 2009, founded Kodo the following Monday, based on the belief that we can create better work by directly including our clients in the creative process. I'm going to save you the 10 minute propaganda spiel. Just kind of fast forward here. The bulk of our work over the last several years is working with large regional breweries. So we help folks rebrand. We do almost always brand strategy and positioning or repositioning, identity, packaging, all sorts of stuff like that geared towards helping people sell more beer. And uh, beyond beer, we do, we work with one gym, but then we also do uh, a lot of food and beverage branding stuff. So a lot of work with BevAlk, bars and restaurants, hospitality groups, some work in cannabis. And uh, basically if you can eat it or drink it, Cody and I, Kodo brands it. So that's who we are. And we are again, almost 12 years old. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank that's, you. Yeah, exactly. that's amazing. Um, so I think that that's a really interesting point to really just start off on. Like, uh, obviously there's a connection, uh, Isaac, between you and Jared, just having you have gone to, you know, going to the gym back like maybe 12 years ago, even, um, I'm sorry, not 12 years ago, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so with you guys really having this niche in food and Bev, how did this connection come about? Like, how did that decision get made between the both of you to, to work together and for you guys on the Kodo side to take on that type of work? So Cody, you can jump in at any time. Uh, I won't speak to how we got connected. Cause again, I'll tell the story about me almost dying from baseline here in a minute. But, uh, 
it really, it, when we, when it's local, we work with, we work outside of our, our focus. So, you know, work with a school, work with you guys, we, it, we, it's really more like face-to-face connection. Do we like the people? Do we believe in what they're doing locally? If it's national or international, then it's, it's obviously focused niche because that's why people are reaching out to us. So, so it's not that big a stretch for us to work with you guys. I mean, just as an aside, we've been, I've been watching your business grow since day one is my business grew back when I didn't know anything about this stuff. And I've just been amazed by how it, it scaled from a box, you know, like just literally a CrossFit gym into this empire that it's become. Uh, and it, it's been frankly amazing to watch you guys grow the business that way. And, and I've always been enamored with it. And so the opportunity, we were talking about this back when I was still an active member, like 15, 16, you were, you were starting to layer in these other programs and you and Peter at that time were kind of rubbing your heads going, I don't understand how this all works. I think we were a little more tactical at that point. How does this all look? But, yeah. but you knew that it was a little deeper and that's, that's, I mean, that's like five, six years ago that you were having these issues and you lived through it and ground grinded through it and brought on more team members and I'm way fast forwarding here, but it, it was a fun opportunity and a project that I'd wanted for years, frankly, just because I, I like what they have built. Yeah. And I appreciate the kind words. I and mean, it means a lot hearing that from you. It's, it's, it's weird starting off with, um, you know, I, I don't know if you guys had a chance to see our rebrand video yet, but just, it talks about how Peter and I started with one or two members on a canal and then slowly built into that original space. You know, 609 North Delaware was literally just a box and it was CrossFit Naptown. We started off as CrossFit Naptown. And then, you know, after a couple of years, we quickly realized that CrossFit is just one piece of the puzzle. And in order for us to grow and diversify, it needed to become a, more of a overall holistic health and wellness space. And it was very important for us to get there. And that's when, you know, Practice Indie Yoga started. That's when Swift, Sweat with Indie for Time started, uh, which is our 45 minute boot camp class. And then before we knew it, we had all these, we had three separate entities and we're like, well, how do we bring this together? And that's when Naptown Fitness in about 2014, 2015 uh, came to fruition was Naptown Fitness is the parent brand and these entities sat underneath it. And I think in that time, Isaac, to your point in 2015, 16, when we first met to kind of talk about rebranding, we were all over the place. It's like you have Naptown Fitness, but then you have these three other businesses underneath it. None of them really talked to each other or made sense, but we didn't really know what to do at the time. And to be just quite frank, our business wasn't at the level at that moment for us to engage a, a firm as prestigious as you all at Kodo um, to enact on that. But we knew we needed it. We just couldn't figure out how to make it work at that time. So um, that's when, you know, fast forward 2020 during the pandemic and, you know, a lot of time of just kind of sitting around twiddling our fingers. It's just like, if this business is going to grow, we're hitting the 10 year mark in 2021. If it's going to propel further, like we have to, we have to bring our messaging together. And that's when we, we reached out to you guys. You guys were amazing to work with and, and figure out what that, what that looks like. And, um, you know, kudos to you. I don't want to give out too much information, but you, your willingness to work with us in certain areas is what allowed us to do this. So we're very thankful for that. Well, and, and I think, yeah. sorry, go, go ahead. I was just going to say, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I'm adding nothing. <laughs> All good. I, I think that this is like a problem that a lot of businesses struggle with. And, and Isaac, I, I know that we've had this conversation on several occasions, just about breweries specifically, when you start talking about brand and the importance of brand, right. And, and like the differences between having a brand and having a logo and, you know, a lot of businesses will have that logo and then a bunch of different programs or a bunch of different things that are, are kind of segmented and don't, you know, they're not cohesive. So can we dive a little bit into the importance of, of having a brand and what that does for, for a business? Yeah, definitely. I think Cody should talk for, he should represent <laughs> Kodo for a yeah. moment because he's going to give a smarter answer than me. Oh boy. Put me on the spot. Um, you know, this is very like 101 and you can read a million books about branding. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to do the thing of like your brand is more than your logo. Um, but for people who, who don't study this stuff and don't know the ins and outs and, and who don't think about this stuff every day because it's their job, um, you have branding or you have a brand, whether you've done branding or not. Um, and, and that's like, that's kind of the insight that really helped me understand this. A branding process becomes kind of an active shaping of what that brand is. So 
people feel a certain way about what you're doing and how you do it, um, whether you've consciously tried to shape and be aware of that or you've just kind of been winging it, either way, you have that brand. Um, so a, a branding process or, or kind of trying to be more conscious or intentional about that branding, um, kind of in the way that we did here with Myriad and these guys, uh, it, it's a process of trying to shape that perception and how people feel um, and, and to be more accurate with what it is that you're offering. And so uh, like a lot of this project really was trying to update the external side of what these guys have done over the last you know, so many years, um, how they've grown, what they've added, um, and, and how their understanding of their industry has kind of evolved. Uh, I think the problem, and, and we'll kind of get into like why you go into this, but um, they were really struggling with just having a lot more to offer than they initially did and not having a way to tell people that easily. Um, but yeah, ultimately, like you're just taking stock of how people feel about you and what you're up to. Um, and then kind of looking at it and going, okay, cool. How can we direct that, shape that, inform that with this work? Jared, when did you realize that that was a thing that you needed, right? Like when did those pain points start to come in and, and you start to think, okay, like the Naptown thing, while I love it, possibly maybe still like it, it just isn't working, right? It doesn't represent who we are. Like when uh, did those starts start coming in? No, it's a great question. I jokingly at our, our, our launch party for, for Myriad Health and Fitness, I jokingly made a comment that uh, as soon as we uh, created CrossFit Naptown in uh, October 8, 2011, we were officially in business. October 9th, I was like, all right, we need to rebrand. Um, <laughs> we're already kind of running into issues. Like one of the main things that we run into is just explaining Naptown. Even the people who live here locally don't understand like what is Naptown. Like, you know, the concept of it's a sleepy city from back in the 60s and 70s because the city used to shut down, you know, before 10 o'clock and there were no bars open up downtown. And it was kind of meant to be that way back in the, the early days. Um, also Indianapolis, you know, so one thing, uh, interesting story I always share that I love is when we became CrossFit Naptown, prior to even opening up our doors, we had a relatively small legal battle because Annapolis, Maryland was Naps, is Naptown as well. And they actually had the domain name CrossFitNaptown.com, even though we were approved by CrossFit HQ to have the domain, domain name CrossFitNaptown.com. So they were Annapolis was smart on their end to buy that domain and name and use it, but they didn't have the license to actually be using that. So they could have gotten in a lot of trouble for using that. So CrossFit HQ made them transfer that over to us. So before we were even officially a CrossFit affiliate, we already started kind of a little, little bit of a ripple with other CrossFit gyms out there, which was really interesting. Um, and another piece of that whole puzzle was down. I remember talking to a couple of different individuals in the city, um, downtown Indy group at that time. And one of the individuals actually was pushing us away from being using the term Naptown because they said it's a, a derogatory term to the city that they're trying to get away from from a messaging standpoint back in early 2011 and uh, Peter and I at the time were like really because we think that's a hip cool name you know Naptown sounds like we're with it we know what's going on um, and that's kind of where we we're at but now I mean we've we've ran into numerous hurdles of other you know I spend five minutes explaining Naptown like I just did to potential clients, people traveling from out of town. Cause we get, a, you know, within our business, we get a lot of visitors, a lot of drop-ins. Um, so it's important for us to kind of, you know, get to our elevator pitch right away of who we are versus explaining what Naptown is. Um, so that was a big piece of it. And we also ran into the facts. Uh, my, my wife is an IP attorney, um, does intellectual property, trademarks and copyrights. And so we can never actually trade or uh, trademark the name Naptown because it's not, it's not geographically specific enough it's like naming something like Indianapolis gym. Well, you can't trademark that and protect that in any way. And you can't do that with Naptown either. Um, so that was another idea behind it all um, of trying to figure out, well, like, how does this scale? How does it become something that we can, we can make into something bigger and a bigger, bigger message, bigger vision as a whole? You know, I around a lot there. So I apologize. Like this is kind of tangential, but I, I just don't feel like there's a lot of gyms out there that think in that way, Jared, like the way that you guys think and approach your business is just completely different than, you know, you, you talked about having a lot of drop-ins. Every time that I travel, I try to drop in at another gym and it's very rare that you go into a place that has a sense of community that's like tangible. Once you walk in, it's like palpable, but also that takes their business outside of like the four walls there and just considers themselves like a CrossFit gym. 
right? So yeah, and I it's just it, it's cool that your mind and and you guys have always kind of been this way of just like we're more than just that. Yeah, and I would love to get Kimberly's perspective on this because we hired so we hired Kimberly. She came on. She's been a part of practice into yoga for a long time. Been a member, a nutrition member of ours, uh, Naptown Nutrition previously, and uh, she came on full time as our mark. I don't know your title. I call you our chief marketing officer at this point. So uh, you're, you're, you're the CMO of Myriad Health and Fitness. But I, I remember we, one of the big tasks for Kimberly was like, hey, Kimberly, we have practice into yoga. We have Naptown Swift. We have all these other programs and identities. Fix it. <laughs> um, what was your biggest struggle coming in? I think having had experience, been a client of, been a staff member within yoga, um, just there was a ton of lateral growth. Each program had its own way of doing things, just organizationally, even internally, like SOPs and things really weren't consistent between programs. The more I saw um, the cohesiveness internally wasn't there as much. And so externally, it was also a bit of a disconnect. So um, just getting ingrained, uh, having some good discussions early on with the leaders of each of the different programs, um, understanding the structure, understanding their goals and their target audiences for each of their services. We definitely had some opportunity to promote some healthy overlap between some of the programs. Um, for instance, especially now with the rebrand, we actually have a yoga teacher that just came on as a fitness coach, and there are now yoga members that are more willing to take and try fitness classes because there's a familiar face. Same lines, we've got our CrossFitters now coming to yoga because they feel comfortable in the space. It's cohesive. It doesn't feel like its own thing. They know they're going to see same members from the community. Um, they know they're going to get their mobility and flexibility work done. So I think biggest challenges was just identifying the fluff and the extra, there was no need for us to have six different Instagram accounts. And that's what we had when I started. Um, so I think just identifying where the strengths were, cutting out some of the extra and doing as much as we could to promote some healthy overlap. I laugh hard at the six Instagrams and the six Facebooks because I love that, but I agree. I understand it makes no <laughs> sense, but I, it's, it makes your life so much easier. You're probably the only person in the world that would enjoy that. I know. You got to tag everything. <laughs> Um, so why, like, why now you, you said that you guys started talking about this in 2020, obviously we all know that there was a pandemic that happened that we're still kind of living through. Uh, but why did that seem like the right time to do it? And why did, you know, you announcing it, um, when you did, so at the end of May, what, you know, what, what was the thought behind those timeframes? Yeah. So I, there really wasn't any thought process necessarily of like, oh my gosh, we were in a pandemic. We're coming through a pandemic, you know, on the outside of this, like we want to have a brand new name and a brand new message. Um, as I mentioned, like we've been talking about this since 2015, 16, very, very seriously. Um, so it really kind of came down to more of like an opportunistic time that we had, just like many other businesses, many other people, we, we restructured our entire business. We started using a system called EOS from the book Traction. Um, entrepreneurs operating system. So that helped us create a leadership team. That leadership team created values for our business. And these values are uh, things that we hire, fire, make huge decisions on, capital expenditures on. Everything is decided on these five values. And then it helped us build out a vision traction organizer. So what our vision, mission, values, you know, what are our three unique? So like going through that whole process really highlighted that our messaging that we currently had previously is Naptown Fitness didn't fit what we wanted to do for the future and moving forward. So that's where it was just like, okay, well, is there ever going to be a better time than now to rebrand? Mm -hmm. The answer was obviously no, because of all these things happening. Yeah. We're like, let's do this. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, they, you know, Kodo uh, was, was flexible with us and, and how we structure this. And I don't know what a typical client looks like, whether it's, you know, two months, three months from execution, but we knew this was going to be like, we knew going into it, this is going to be nearly a nine month to 12 month process for us to go from signing a contract to, you know, actually launching. And we wanted that. And they were like, cool, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's take the time to build this out. So um, that was super helpful for us as well in this process. Then in terms of the launch, I think we just looking at the calendar, we had to pick a date. 
it's a sink or swim kind of situation. You have to get it out there, start putting it out there and the things will all happen accordingly. So um, just looking at the things that we had planned for the near future in the CrossFit culture, there's a, um, a workout that's done on Memorial Day that does draw quite a bit of um, attention to the gym, draws a lot of people into the space. And so because Memorial Day also falls at the last day of the month, it just felt like the right opportunity to bring together members of our community. You know, we, at the time, we're really banking on awesome weather, being able to do a lot of this outside. Um, we had no idea that the COVID restrictions and things were going to start being relaxed. It just, the stars aligned in that way perfectly for us, but um, it really just made sense for us to use this day and use the fact that we would already have such a strong sense of community uh, capitalizing on that and announcing the rebrand to our members that same day. How scared were you to do that? <laughs> Cause you guys kept it under wraps for a really long time. Um, and I know Jared, uh, had kind of been hinting at, at this coming, um, but just not wanting to share anything. I'm, I'm sure that it was pretty nerve wracking that day finally to like announce it and just get real time reactions from, from members that have been there for so long just to be like, Oh my God. Yeah, we had about 115 people that came to the announcement and just doing a quick scan of the faces as the video was playing. It was, it was a lot of smiles. There was applause at the end. And one of the things that Cody and Isaac warned us about is that people, there will be people that don't love your rebrand and you have to be prepared for it. And you have to be prepared to be met with some criticism and I personally haven't seen any of that. I don't know, Jared, if you've had any, but it's been so, so well received. And uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Weird. Good. <laughs> well, <I laughs> Might be the, the, the first time say, that's ever happened. <laughs> I'd love to say, I mean, thank you again to Kodo as a, as a whole, because they prepared us. Like that was one of the cool things through this whole process was it was just like, it's not like they just give, hand you a logo in different colors and say, go run with it. Like they helped us build out, you know, what it looks like from, you know, 60 days, prior to launch to actual launch, they helped us with some social media kits um, and, you know, social media pieces as well to like really um, make our messaging super concise on the front end. Um, so it's really, I mean, it, it was instrumental to have them as a partner essentially in this. It wasn't just, you know, Kimberly running with, a, a, like I said, a color scheme and logo. It was definitely something that was built around. So it was super helpful. Wow. Can applaud you guys for thinking through the launch that intensely on your own end, because we've seen even in, in projects, thankfully that we weren't involved in, uh, when rebrands get announced and it just gets dropped out of thin air, everyone's upset. I mean, even people that might be open and amenable to the change because it's just, no one likes change. And so you get really upset. I mean, you really yeah. have to, depending on the, the, brand equity, the amount of time in the market, the amount of your audience, how big it is, you have to really cookie crumb your way through that and, and bring people along. And then internally, you have to launch it. I mean, I know that was a challenge with us. We had a we had our, our executive team, like these are the people that know, but then we kind of have to engage some of other folks inside the, the community. So how do we do that without giving it all up? So you did a great job for anyone listening to this, thinking about, you know, how do I launch my rebrand? It starts internally, believe it or not. You have to get everyone on the same page. So, so people are all saying the same language, saying the same messaging. And then externally, you did a great job of launching around that event. I mean, we always love events because that that's like a big, you know, firework going off and everything's happy. But uh, yeah, I, I just want to thank Cody for getting in the, the governor's ear to lift COVID restrictions <laughs> to align with your launch. I think that was going above and beyond on his part. It, it was, uh, it was nothing, you know. <laughs> No big deal. Me and uh, Governor, <laughs> who's the governor? <laughs> Mitch, Mitch Daniels. Yeah, Mitch, Mitch Daniels. Mitch, Mitch, yeah. Mitch Mulcom. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're like this. Well, go ahead, David. Well, I, I just, I, I really want to just start to nerd out on, on some of the finer details. Like I want to get the story behind the name, how many other names were, you know, you had to burn through before you finally settled in on this and why this one made sense. And then really Cody and Isaac, I would love to hear on your end, um, just kind of how you piece together things for a, a gym, right? Like how does color play in, you know, how do the, the little logos, you know, the, I don't know what to call them. I suppose just like animations, like how do those play into it? And, and what does that represent when you're, you know, showing that to, to your community and representing that? So, 
So I guess let's start with the name. Maybe let, let me start re- real quick, Cody. Just, I want to get one line out because we haven't even mentioned it till now. One of the most interesting things about this entire project was your team coming to us and saying, we don't want to look like a gym. And, and Cody and I, when we hear things like, cause we'll hear stuff like that from time to time, we're like, okay, well, we'll see how long that we'll see how comfortable you are with that. When we start <laughs> actually looking through brand strategy and you go, eh, actually, I didn't mean that, but, but you held, you held fast to that through the whole process. So that was when, as, as Cody takes the reins here, starts talking about our naming process. That was the overarching brief. It's like, how do we speak to being a gym, but not, you know, be like, sound like a, a, a tough tough guy gym, which is what all gyms, you know, that's the, the look and feel of them. So Cody, how did we get here? Um, it, we're talking about names. So I'll try to stay on the topic of naming and, and names. Um, but I don't want to ignore the importance of all the conversations we had with leadership team, staff, um, members, just people in the community. I mean, we had dozens and dozens of pages of notes. I mean, we're talking about uh, upwards of 50 hours of just talking to different people, um, all told. So a lot of information came through with that. Um, we were able to kind of organize that, identify the patterns and opportunities there and kind of gauge where people were at both, you know, with the existing name and, Hey, there's going to be a change. What do you think about that? And kind of get, take the temperature of like what direction we could head. So that happened first. We have all that information, then we have to organize it. We have to group it all together in ways that make sense. Uh, we call them brand essences, but essentially we're making different narratives, you know, to present back to, to the team and kind of the executive folks. Here's where we could take this stuff. Um, and then they kind of give us feedback there. Then we're on naming. So we have all of that informing this process of all the different names we could choose. We usually work in beer, craft beer, all around the country, all around the world. Naming in craft beer over the last 10 years has gotten harder and harder and harder. It's terrible. Um, There are thousands and thousands of breweries making, you know, times 100 beers, each one with some insane name that someone spent, you know, another 50 hours cooking up. Here in the sort of fitness category, when you're looking at gyms and kind of the, the sort of pan health and fitness industry, it might be harder <laughs> because you have everything from, you know, top level uh, health programs from, you know, global hospital groups all the way down to, you know, Joe Blow starting a gym in his garage. Every name under the sun has been picked. Um and so when we're shaking that out, I mean, Isaac and I, we probably had, I, I just remember like going through the list on my phone of me just sitting there trying to th- think stuff up and check that was available, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names that were either taken, stuff we really liked, but it was going to be a no-go because it was already in the trademark database, um, stuff that was going that we kind of liked, but wasn't going to work because there was no permutation of the, the web address that would be available at all. Uh, so heartbreaking, uh, grueling process. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, what then, okay, we get, we cut all that chaff away. We get rid of the stuff that we really like, but is it going to fly? We, pr- we come back and present, I don't know. It was like a, maybe a couple dozen to three dozen names to these guys kind of talk about what we like about them, the strengths, the weaknesses. Um, and then we kind of went forward from there. Isaac, do you have anything to add to that as you were, as we were kind of digging through all those I, hundreds and thousands of names. While you were talking, I pulled up the first document. I think it'd be fun to look at some of the the ones that got axed. Uh-huh. Um, yes, really you mentioned we can see. It. So we'll do this, and your folks watching this are going to go. That's a way better name. What are you doing? So this is going <laughs> to this is not going to work well. But yeah, as Cody mentioned, very nonlinear approach to branding. We always assume that we're going to go into round two or three. Uh, interestingly, I think. Cody, did we, or Jared, did we go into a round two or three, but then still end up using Myriad from round one? I, I need to review that, but I think we actually did. It Thanks, doesn't, doesn't matter. I'll look it up. But you so to share right now. What's that? You, can you share your screen? Do you have the, it pulled up? You want to share that? Uh, I'm going to murder my computer if I try to do that. Okay. I'm going to, but I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this call. You're good. Uh, <laughs> one, one of the essences Uh, called home at last. So this idea of not overused third space, but your idea of your, your gym as a sanctuary, as a home, as this place where people can really come just 
be themselves and do whatever they need to do to make a better version of themselves. We, we had options in that, uh, that essence called dwell fitness basis, remedy, hearth gather. So the way this works, we, we, we like to just get a gut reaction. We'll have the name and we'll just present it, you know, gather health and fitness. And then we can, we can put a little more meat to that as to why it need why it works generally in our mind, if we have to explain too much about why it works, probably not, you know, the best option you can push back against that, I think in some cases, but another essence called strength in numbers. This was a concept that spoke to the variety of ways you can achieve strength, obviously just the the myriad ways you can get fit, all the different ways that you offer that, but also speaking really well to the, the diverse community that you, you have, you know, older folks, younger folks, all this sort of stuff. Uh, some names that came out of that were Array Fitness. I think that's actually still a good option. Myriad, this that was around one name. Panacea, which I felt so smart and fancy for suggesting <laughs> that. And everyone's like, what's that word? How do you say that? Cody like and Isaac's, I even, yeah, Cody Isaac's and I over even here. He's playing Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> while we're trying to name a gym. <laughs> yeah, we, Cody and I, I knew it was dead when we were in the presentation with you. And Cody goes, uh, this option is Panacea. And I went, what is that word? <laughs> so, well, all right, that's dead. Uh, Strata, Fortify, uh, Swift. Actually, we, you guys have a name that we felt was strong enough that could be bumped up to corporate level. Swift is a phenomenal name. Generally, uh, is it an ac an ac acronym? An acronym. My brain's not working. I should have should have drank more coffee. Um, Generally, those can be forced, but sweat yours actually it's phenomenal. So we we were we were proposing that as a corporate level uh, early on. Fortify is a great example here where we set up our parameters and guidelines, and when we shared that option, we knew it was too Jimmy. We knew this is too like dudes like dudes with abs. Like I can't walk in here, you know. Like I, I'm gonna not feel comfortable. Fortify is like. I like it on the messaging standpoint, but it felt too far in that this feels like a gym. This feels like a tough guy type of place. Uh, let's see here. Cody mentioned this. We always like to, so we're intellectual property as Cody mentioned is unfortunately it, the most important thing that we're weighing all of this against in coming up with this, we have dozens of hundreds of names that are not available just outright that we don't, we generally heretofore wouldn't have shared with people, but we found it valuable to share those with our clients because it's still, we, we say these aren't available, but here's why we liked it because that can mm -hmm. spur into round two, maybe get us uh, oriented in the right direction. So long haul fitness, uh, dauntless Haven mosaic is, is one that, that we, it was similar to myriad. Uh, maybe it seems a little fragile when I think of mosaic, I think of like a, a piece of glass art that's going to break. Mm -hmm. So maybe not great, but still, still kind of getting in the right area and upswing just feels very upbeat and very fun. Those names were available. Uh, ultimately, as Cody mentioned, we shared all of these. I think we went into another round. We came back to myriad for a, a, a variety of reasons. The number one is, is that it, it, it spoke to the, the variety of ways you can get fit. So very tactically, it's like, oh yeah, see there's, we have a bunch of different programming, but then it also speaks to this diverse community. And then this Cody, I don't think you and I, this is why we like collaborating and working with our clients. Like, I don't think we have the idea of activating the my, so M Y and myriad. It's like my yeah. fitness, my yoga. I think, I think Kimberly or someone on your team did. Uh, yeah, and then you Kimberly, kind of convinced, you convinced us during that presentation. And we said, oh, that that's the direction we need to do that. Um, that's a long winded way, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a very gut wrenching process and this one wasn't too dramatic. I think we, we ended up with myriad in the first round, which is remarkable just from a process standpoint. That's not usually the case. No. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Kimberly, can you, I mean, we sat there with some of these, I think, you know, again, it was like three dozen 36 plus names. And then I think we broke it down to like five or 10, maybe it was 10 at first. And we broke it down to five. And I remember sitting there in one of our leadership meetings of just like, we voted. I mean, it was, you give this one a five, you give this one, it's four, three, two, one. And then we just took the, the lowest average. I think I took a picture of it and screenshot and sent it to, uh, to Kodo and just like, Hey guys, this is kind of what we came up with. Um, and that's where like myriad came from. Um, there's some people that were really into it and there was others that were really against it for, for various reasons. Some people thought that the name itself, which I don't disagree with, you know, you could say, uh, I say myriad, but there's also myriad. Um, some people were concerned that others may not even know what that word is or means, or 
uh, or how to say it at all. Um, some people thought it could have been a little bit too uh, pretentious of a word, um, which is a concern for us as well. But at the end of the day, the, you know, you know, Isaac, as you mentioned, how it speaks to the diversity of our solutions to the diverse programs that we have, to the diverse uh, individuals we have within our space. And, and, you know, that's one of our big missions moving forward is ac accessibility um, for communities uh, of all levels, uh, marginalized communities. Um, that's something we want to really get ourselves into to help make generational change into the future. So like this, this name, this messaging really kind of it all started coming together as one, which is really neat to see. And it's one of those words, I think I mentioned this to you pretty early on, Jared, that just that word like just looks good. You know, there, there's something about the way that the letters sit next to each other. I think one of the things that I pointed out right away was that Y almost looks like somebody stretching, right? Like you start to personify that actual letter as a person, which I thought was really cool. And then just like on the logo side of things and the little symbols that you use for, for all the other programs, like how did, you know, how did that process come together? And, and can you talk a little bit more tactfully or maybe that's the right word, just about like how that actual like badging came together? Because I, I love it. I think it looks great. I'd like Cody to answer that. But before, before he does, I, I just want to, Jared had mentioned something that I think is valuable to discuss. This you you levied i mean you brought up the same critiques that we had through the process this could be too i think kimberly actually were you the one that had reservations on on this it, it was you or johnny someone on the on the internal team maybe we shouldn't air that someone wasn't 100 percent, but they're like okay we'll, we'll move with it but those are good critiques there are two there are two different ways to pronounce it a lot of people might not know what it means it could seem pretentious those are things that might preclude us from suggesting a name but we thought in what we're going to discuss right now in the visual styling and in, in the, the look and feel, the identity, the, the system, the secondary assets and stuff, that's how you address those concerns. This is how we make it not look pretentious. This is how we make it not look like this fancy thing. This is how we make it look approachable. And this is how we also balance where we were and you know, like with the star and the identity uh, with a little bit of equity into where we would like to go. Cody, take it from here. I just wanted to touch on that. And so, by the way, I, I pulled up the brand guidelines and I don't think there's anything proprietary that we can't share in this, but no. uh, I'm going to click through it. So hopefully Kimberly's not mad about that either, but we're, we're doing it. We're Kimberly doing it. left. She, yeah. She's like, I'm out. No. See ya, I'm done. She's changing rooms right now. There she is. Yeah, she's on monster.com right now. Like, <laughs> 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 um, it, you know, we've kind of alluded to brand essences and, and, um, I think it's actually outlined in this document here, but really like w when we're talking about those big broad sweeping directions that, that we can go um, with like branding and marketing and communication, we're trying to have a, a larger narrative. And I think the one that we ended up kind of sticking with is this one, uh, your expert guide. Um, we wanted to make this look less like a gym and more like an instruction manual for how to get your life <laughs> and your body and your mind um, to where you want it to be, acknowledging the fact that for a beginner um, or for someone like me who has lifted neither bar nor bell in his entire life, um, to be able to say, no, 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 we'll, we'll set you up. We, we know all this stuff. You're not going to have to think about this or even learn too much. Just come here, trust us. So really it's dressing this up in a way that's like, okay, these guys are the experts I can lean on them a little bit. I can come here because I know that they're going to put me on the right path. Yeah. Naptown fitness is a comprehensive team of the best coaches in the business. Um, and it's, it's true. We saw that firsthand. Um, the, the, the amount of guidance and uh, mentorship is incredible. Um, it's probably the selling point of this um, company, in my opinion, uh, from a member's standpoint. So, how do you translate that to visuals? And that's working with these guys, showing them examples of here's how we think this could look ultimately landing on this sort of mono line, very simple, easy to reproduce. I think we reinterpreted the original star, which was from the Indianapolis flag and the original Naptown fitness logo, carried that over in this mono line, very clean, very clear, almost infographic style um, for the logo itself. It's a star. So, you know, carrying that over for obvious reasons, but I think the 
real power of this. And, and I want to give Allison, uh, one of our senior designers, a shout out for her work on this because Allison is one of the most incredible designers I've ever worked with. Um, she's amazing. And this is kind of all her shaping. Um, how do we take all these different programs, all these different offerings under this one umbrella and make this really easy to parse, clean, fresh looking um, icon set and system that ties back in with this main logo and all is just kind of wrapped up in a nice bow and a nice package. So you can kind of see how we went from concept to thinking about how we could execute it to the final product um, kind of with a continual thrust, reinforcing this idea of expert guidance and um, just trying to simplify it. Because again, like this stuff can be really intimidating. And they, when we showed them this stuff, like there was a point where I was worried. It's like, our, you know, gut check, like would they say they don't want to look, look like a gym. <laughs> how much do they mean that? Um, and, you know, to your guys' credit, you stuck with that and executed on that. And I think like, I think as you get into some of the secondary and program icons, especially, you can kind of see um, where that takes root. So I don't know, re really kind of trying to get back to that main point of they want to grow this thing. I think, I think uh, Jared and the leadership team really want to bring in people who are not fitness people necessarily, but who understand like either their doctor saying, hey, you know, you need to do this or whatever it is to make it more approachable and easier to digest. And I yeah, think, a, go ahead, Kimberly. Uh, just one other thing to note, especially on this main logo concept, um, something that we paid a nod back to our last 10 years of business with the star and bringing back that element of the Naptown logo, but then also the shape of the badge looks and feels a bit like a soccer um, badge. And so what we loved is that Peter and Jared met playing soccer and that was a big part of their childhood and um, to be able to give a nod to the, the where we came from, I think is pretty spectacular as well. Yeah, and I would I would add to that, that the soccer piece of it was huge for us to have that like badge logo. You know, we're probably going to end up making soccer jerseys, uh, whether Kim really likes it or not. Probably going to make uh, some scarves, soccer scarves as well that are going to come out uh, with Myriad Health and Fitness, which I'm pretty pumped about. But really, you know, it's, the, the star was a huge piece, but we wanted a different star. I mean, this comes back to like people coming to us who want to do Naptown, Naptown BJJ. It's like, well, that was never us. And the same thing here with the star was a star we used was the same star that I think five or six different companies use now, which is the star from the flag of uh, the city of Indianapolis. And it's that red star. And I think Employee Indy uses it. Mm -hmm. um, there's another, there's a um, real estate arm of uh, another company up on 38th street that uses that same star. So like changing that star was super important for us, but still having the star was important for us. And then same thing with the established in 2011. This is something, again, uh, Allison, you, you mentioned Cody. She was phenomenal to work with and brilliant mm -hmm. and took our feedback because we had lots of feedback on all of these. And you'll see later with the other identities. Um, but like having the established in 2011, didn't realize how important that was to tell people like, hey, we, we were another business or are this another business, but we're still the same business. So that still allows people to, um, you know, understand that we're the same people, which is really important for us as well. And as, as a member who is looking at this, um, you know, one of the things that really, that I really liked was that the name is kind of like, um, I don't even know if this is the right word to use in this instance, but it's kind of like androgynous, right? It's like neither male nor female. So it's mm -hmm. not like strong or feminine, but then you have the, the, the actual badge that to me, you know, it, it did scream some of that soccer style badging, but also had this military feel. So just like even the aesthetic of it felt strong without telling you with the actual words that it was strong. And then I just noticed that even that, that cross in between the health and fitness is almost like the medical cross which your brain, at least my brain, will associate with like being healthy. I never, right? even, never even put that together, but that does actually look like that. Did you guys do that on purpose? I'll have to ask Allison and get back to you. But yes, of course we did. I have <laughs> been a huge stickler on the plus versus the ampersand. Mm -hmm. If I see your mirror, yeah. period, health and fitness, it's like, mm, we're, <laughs> we're a plus now. <laughs> Uh, but with some of that, I mean, like having the his horizontal stamp build, like we never had that with Naptown Fitness. Actually, that's all we had at Naptown Fitness. We never had the vertical or any other version of it. So like having the ability to work through um, the circle build, obviously for uh, social media has been super helpful for us. 
Um, but then what really excites me, and I'll let you guys kind of take over, uh, Cody and Isaac, is I'm getting down there. Bear with me as I scroll through some of this. Um, the program builds. So this is where like really all of us, when we saw this stuff, we're just like, holy cow, this is what we've needed forever. And we just never knew we needed it, but it was absolutely brilliant to be able to, looking at this page is, it solves the problem of what we were having with Naptown Fitness. And I'll let you guys kind of build on some of that as well. Yeah, you guys just through natural growth, and bringing on all these other programs, you ended up with this very snarled, messy thing. It happens with every business over there. You end up with sub brands that aren't technically sub brands. They're they're just every you you have different hires that come in and they put their stamp on stuff and then leave. It not you, but just like it happened. It's very weird. And and one of the more tactical good things to come out of this process is bringing everything together under some sort of umbrella. If, if the strategy calls for it, and in this case, you have very clear sub brands, very clear, I won't call them verticals, but very specific programs. So like longevity is a phenomenal one where you're helping older folks make sure that they can kind of go into their golden years and not, you know, fall apart versus kids are very different things. And so, but they live under the same brand. So how do we make those look alike and look relate in some way and very tactical way is just making sure that all the icons look the same, <laughs> look in the same, same vein. Cody can probably say something smarter than me on that, but, but uh, yeah, we're just bringing everything together under one roof. Yeah. I mean, what we talked about you guys growing and what you've added since you started in a box with a garage door on it. Um, uh, like I would almost think about this, like the designers out there who have, you know, Adobe creative suite, like this is like your software suite, um, your package. So this all needs to work together. I, I can really talked a little bit earlier about cross pollination between the programs. It was very much our hope that through doing this, um, you would start to see these because you could tell, you know, certain programs are going to be more successful than others. It's a portfolio of offerings. So that's the same as in with a craft brewery. They have one beer they sell the hell out of, and they have a few more that kind of play supporting roles. Same deal probably in fitness with different health programs, but they're all super important. And if you can kind of create a, a scheme where they all feel like they're on the same level, um, the hope was that maybe people who take yoga would check out boot camp or maybe people who are interested in the longevity program would also check out nutrition because those two things are very closely tied together. Um, so it's cool to hear that, that maybe that's starting to happen. I know that was a big goal uh, of this whole thing was how do we get this, you know, the strength and fitness people to come check out the yoga program and vice versa. Um, so th this was a cool way to put all those things kind of on the same playing field and, and associate them more, more closely with one another. I felt like this was a, a fun part for us and I, it might have not have been a fun part for you guys because this is where we really tore things apart mm -hmm. um, and we were very particular with the leadership team making decisions on you know anything from the icon to you know the, the symbols on the side to the the move logo to the personal training logo to the longevity I think the longevity originally um, it was a sunset and we <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. a tombstone <laughs> Seriously, and, and man, that's that's thing. really insensitive, Isaac. You shouldn't have done that. Look, Thankfully, they can't all be home runs, all right. <laughs> but thank you, one of our one of our leadership team members, and something I forgot to mention earlier. Like you guys were very, very critical up front of making sure we didn't share this any of this with a yeah. lot of people, um, because as you said, too many cooks in the kitchen, you're going to cause too many problems too quickly, and you're never going to make a decision. So it was literally our leadership team. My wife uh, was in on it, um, and a few other. Uh, people on my personal board of directors, uh, Kimberly probably doesn't know this, but Fabian actually saw a lot of this stuff prior. Uh, I trusted his marketing expertise. So very, very few people saw this, but luckily the people who did had very, very good decisions on, you know, maybe we shouldn't have longevity logo being into the sunset because it looks like they're going mm. off. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, and there's a few others as well. You know, uh, the Myriad Yoga is a perfect example where Practice Indie Yoga over the years has created a very strong brand on its own. And it's uh, that, that teal color we really, really wanted to keep and uh, have that consistency. But we also wanted to have the mermaid's tail and uh, the lotus um, included in that as well. And it was very important for us to do it. And you guys were able to execute that at a high level. 
Um, and Kimberly, I, if you get it, like, want to, or I would prefer if you did, can you talk a little bit about some of these brands? Um, because I, I don't even think some of our members understand like where, the, where we're going with some of these things, um, if that makes sense. Sure. So um, just starting with strength, I mean, that is the base program that CrossFit program, strength and fitness is what we call it. Um, that is your heavy barbell class, um, things like pull-up rig are included. This is just our top level is what we say um, in terms of difficulty, but um, certainly accessible to beginners as well. Um, then within the yoga program, I mean, our yoga program could stand alone on its own, um, but again, strategically, it made more sense to bring it all under one umbrella. I mean, we've got everything from restorative classes to um, alignment-based classes to help build secondary strength and um, really start to introduce some standing yoga postures to community members that might not have done a yoga flow before. Uh, we have the standard flow classes. We have some really high level classes that get into theory and really pay tribute to the origins of yoga, which is a rare offering, um, usually in the, the Western world. Um, and then also, I think just specialty offerings like aerial yoga, um, we have some heated classes, like it, it truly is its own robust schedule. So there's something for everybody. Uh, we did actually just rename all of our yoga classes to make it even more accessible and concise and clear um, to kind of make that um, again, just a little more approachable and less intimidating. Um, nutrition, we do our nutrition coaching, just like personal training. Um, our nutrition folks are looking for ways to maximize their efforts in the gym, um, just supporting the efforts they're doing with sustainable habits. A lot of times we see other nutrition programs that are so restrictive and so um, just limiting on the things that you can eat or the amount of calories you should be consuming. And really we look at it from more of a, what two or three habits can we start by changing to make sure that we are, you know, working towards a more optimal balance of your fitness and your nutrition. Um, MOVE, this program is shifting towards um, a very accessible, uh, kind of a place where some of our specialty programs lie. So just recently we added a running based class and a rowing based class, very basic cardio centered classes, um, but things that ideally you don't need a ton of experience to hop in on and uh, start to feel good about moving your body, um, moving towards some more like body weight exercises and just some basic functional movements. Um, that again will help you, hopefully help you build into the boot camp and strength and fitness um, levels later on. Our boot camp classes, those are uh, formally known as SWIFT. Those are 45 minute classes, uh, high intensity interval training, um, really nice balance of cardio, heart rates up for the majority of the class, but you're also using light to moderate weights, uh, kettlebells, dumbbells, things of that nature. So very much talk a, a little bit about why we named it or why it's a boot camp versus Swift now. Yep. Cause I think a lot of people are like WTF on that yep. one. Totally. So, um, when we are selling to new members, it, it is, kind of like the name Naptown. Like we spent five minutes explaining the name and why it was called what it was called versus getting to the meat of what they're looking for, which is information about the programming. So uh, we found that we were having to say it's pretty much a boot camp class. So why weren't we just calling it boot camp? Uh, so uh, it, it's been a nice transition. Members have dealt well with it. Um, and I think people now know what to expect when they walk in versus Swift didn't really paint that picture as much um, other than the fact that it was a shorter class and you probably work pretty hard. Um, and then we offer personal training, one-on-one -on -one sessions, just allowing people to specialize in uh, different areas that they might be struggling with, specific goals that they're having. Um, we have got kids programs, again, generationally wanting to make some change, start them young with some movement, learning some proper form on different exercises and things. And then longevity, just defying any stereotypes about aging that we can. We've got longevity athletes that kick my butt in workouts. So um, it's a really, really incredible group of individuals. And uh, we're, yeah, always excited to grow that program. Well, I appreciate that. And 
again, shout out to uh, Kodo, you know, like Miri, the personal training, like having that as a target, something we never thought about. And, you know, that's one thing that we push to our members where it's like, if you want to target on specific weaknesses, like personal training, one-on-one training, 30 minute sessions, 45 minute sessions, 60 minute sessions, whatever it is, you know, target right on those zero in on those. So it, it, everything nailed it where we wanted to be. And then scrolling through a little bit, I know um, we talked a little bit about the my positioning, and this is something that probably getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because we haven't. Uh, Kimberly's like, eh, we haven't really used it. it yet, but this is yeah. uh, was a huge aspect to the decision of going with Myriad, um, and you can see all the different variations we can have with these programs, which is you know brilliant. I want to again mention just how remarkable it is that you guys have at scaled into this offering. It's just, it's so much different and more robust because back in the day when I joined back in 2012 or 11, whenever it was, uh, had I had the option to do nutrition in a very targeted way, like I could have addressed so many more issues so early on. It's just amazing that you can have someone come in the door and, and you can have a conversation with them when you're on, on ramping them or onboarding them and say, Hey, we have these four or five things that I think would be great for you to look at. You might consider them. You don't have to. I know we can just start with X, Y, and Z. It's just amazing. And it's something that I don't know is being offered from any, I, I see things getting really siloed in the fitness industry. I see people either doubling down on CrossFit, running away from CrossFit to create basically CrossFit under their own brand or just Globo gyms or strength. So it's, it's interesting to see you guys doing this myriad, I'm sorry, this variety <laughs> of programming. It's, it's, it's awesome. That's, it's just yeah. incredible. And the cool thing, and to your point, is when a new potential member comes through the door, we can right off the bat offer a combination of programs that meets them where they're at in that moment. And maybe they join, stick with those programs. And then in six months, their goals change, their bodies change. They have a different purpose for being at the gym. We can shift the programs that they're focusing on and that they're utilizing it's a really cool thing within our customer life cycle. Like there's always going to be that perfect combination, that perfect solution. It just might change from month to month or every six months or whatever it is. So I think that's something else that we'd love to lean into with the name. I'm just slowly scrolling through right now to give uh, the real big marketing nerds a little bit of uh, some in-depth behind the scenes of, of what it looks like. Here's the part of the presentation that no one ever heeds. So you can just scroll real fast <laughs> yeah. through this. It's just like we'll, 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 people drop a hundred grand on a project and then we'll see like a yellow logo two weeks later. Like, what are you doing? Like, what is <laughs> happening here? Yeah. I, I, haven't do like seen, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything egregious like that from you guys yet, but not yet. It does I, happen. <laughs> I did stretch and squeeze on golf balls and it didn't go well. Just like <laughs> of course you did. Uh, you know, I definitely want to talk about now that we're almost like a month removed from when you guys announced this, kind of how it's going, both internally and with the members. Uh, but before we get into that, Isaac, you're not going to escape this interview without talking about you almost dying uh, with baseline. So I think we deserve to know this story about what actually happened. I've heard Peter tell a similar story on maybe your podcast a while back. And I, I think it was about me. Uh, I came in. So, <laughs> so I, I rode my bike past uh, CrossFit Naptown to, to our office for, you know, months while you were opening or weeks or whatever it was. This is in the early days when CrossFit wasn't the games. It wasn't anything. It was just this thing, this nascent thing that, that you jumped online and looked for. And so I joined the gym and I, I'd been a, a, an athlete in high school and then just, you know, alcohol, came in and, and training disappeared. I became a piece of shit for a while. And so I, I went from nothing to, we're just going to do baseline, which I mean, short of high school or wrestling, CrossFit's the most intense thing I've ever, I mean, or maybe like jujitsu is like the most intense thing I've ever, ever done in my life. And, and so I did uh baseline five, what, 500 meter, 40 air squat, 30, whatever. Pretty sit up, push ups, 10 pull ups. Yep, you're right. Not a, not a suit. I mean, <laughs> I did it in probably like 940, 950, 10 minutes. Not a hard thing, you know, now, but I, I basically like blacked out. Like I went in your, <laughs> your back bathroom. I was like laying in the bathroom hallway for like an hour and a half. Like I could, I was getting tunnel vision. Like I, I felt like I was going to die. Somehow, <laughs> somehow drove home. Like should not, I should have had my, my, my wife come get me drove home essentially drunk, like couldn't even see the road 
and then like crawled into my house, laid down on my kitchen floor for an hour. I'd, I'd never worked that hard since high school. And uh, so anyway, fast forward, I remember you, Jared and Peter talking on a podcast, maybe with Fabian and, and you said early on, yeah, we had some guy come in and he like almost died. And we're like, is, can we do CrossFit? Or are we going to kill people? I'm pretty <laughs> sure that was about me uh, with my 10 minute baseline time. But yeah, it, 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 it just as an aside, fundamentally shifted how I train and, and view fitness. And, and it, it's been, I, I'm doing CrossFit probably three days a week now. For, I, I didn't do it for a while. I got into boring uh, powerlifting because I like bro stuff, but, but yeah, CrossFit's amazing. And I almost died. And I thank you for that experience. And from a marketing and brand protection standpoint, <laughs> CrossFit is a perfectly safe activity. <laughs> um, Unless, <laughs> we have a yes, it is, four yeah. series foundations uh, that people go through where they actually work one-on-one -on -one with a coach, making sure that they are moving safely, learning things like how to bail out of a lift if there's too much weight on the bar, learning how to listen to their bodies so that they don't get to the point of blacking out on a bathroom floor and um, <laughs> kind of having the right tweaks and uh, modifications they might need as they start to get into the group class environment. So rare story does not happen often, but we do battle often the misconception that CrossFit will injure me or kill me. That, that's a me story, not a CrossFit story. I think yeah. that's a how if, big POS I was. At the time. If you didn't almost die, do you even marry it, bro? <laughs> Is that the new question? <laughs> that's definitely on brand. Yeah. <laughs> I love the disclaimer and thank you for the uh, attorney uh, waiver. I feel like I just signed. That's perfect. Uh, uh -huh. To an extent that, that, I mean, it could be the best way to close this up about the, the evolution of our brand, the evolution of our name, the evolution of the business as a whole. I mean, when we started out in 2011, it was CrossFit Naptown and it was rip your hands. It was yeah. lift heavy barbells and slam them on the ground. It was, who could work the hardest and, you know, be passed out on the ground the longest and whose legs hurt the longest. Like that's what it was. And that's what CrossFit was. And now we have shifted and changed since 2014, 15 to be an overall health and wellness, mental uh, mindfulness space. And that's what it's all about. And that's what it's, we, we encourage competitive fitness, fitnessers, competitive exercisers, uh, CrossFitters to go to other gyms now who have that environment, who have, who, who really embrace the competitive side. Uh, what we do is we embrace anyone who needs is in the journey of learning about fitness and nutrition and mindfulness. And we want to meet them where they're at. And that's, that's the evolution of us as human beings, um, as business owners, as employees here. And, you know, yeah, we did have a introductory class where you would just come in and do baseline and we would crush you <laughs> and you would either show up or not show up the next day. And some people would show up and some wouldn't. And then after three or four years of doing that, you realize, wow, this is a terrible business model. <laughs> yeah. um, you scare everyone away instantly. Yeah, you do. Except for people like Isaac, who then come back the next day is like, I almost died yesterday. I'm in. I, I mean, I, I kind of liked it when I uh, came back to life. I was like, oh, that was interesting. Cool. Let's and try now this. We do, to Kimberly's point now, like even to get in our boot camp class, you have to take a foundation that's two one-on-one -on -one sessions for an hour just so we know you're moving safely. So you know, you're moving safely. So you know that you have the proper scales and adjustments. And that way, when you step into class, you're comfortable. And now the coach is comfortable and the rest of the classmates around you are comfortable. And the same thing with strength and fitness, uh, which we also call CrossFit now as well. It's four sessions to get in there, but this has transformed our business to being a safe relationship-based community where you will reach your goals as long as you're doing the work. Um, so that's my, at the end, um, beautiful tied all up, uh, Fabian, any questions we missed or anything that you wanted to hit or anyone else have anything they want to, uh, throw out there as well. Just want to thank you for the opportunity again. It, it was, I, I wanted this project selfishly for a long time and I'm, I'm glad we got to do it. And I'm really upset that we don't have cool hats, whatever it's fine. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity and, and I'm, I'm glad that you trusted us with the project. I'm, I'm proud of how it turned out. Yeah, I, I just want to shout out Allison Tylek again. Her work on this was incredible. She's not here on this talk, but uh, so much of what this ended up looking like and, and becoming was her hard work and her skill and talent. So yay, Allison. <laughs> <laughs>
No, she was amazing to work with. And, um, you know, I, I always felt bad because the leadership team would meet, have this giant list of notes. And then we would send it off to Alice and be like, Hey, we really like what you're doing, but like, can you do all this and change all this? But I think the best, the best meeting we ever had was the first one on site with you guys. Yeah. And I think, uh, I can't really correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys said, don't tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. Yeah. And that for us was a game changer in, mm-hmm. this, in this whole process. Cause otherwise we could be like, Oh, we like this. we like that. And now we live by a, a value of ours is open, honest, radical candor mm-hmm. feedback. And yeah. like that resonated with our team where it's like, okay, cool. We don't like all of these things. And then yeah. you guys took it in and, and respectfully uh, made the changes. Yeah. You cannot do this process properly. If you're just patting people on the back and, and withholding the, I'm going to just not say the negative thing right now. Let's, let's get another 25 hours into this project before we, bring up this concern. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if, if people want to check out myriad, I'm sure there are a myriad ways that people can do that, but I'm right. I had to get that one in there. Um, so Jared or Kimberly, you know, take an opportunity, you know, direct people to, to come check you out. And then uh, same for, for Isaac and Cody, if people are interested in, in working with you guys, how, how can they go about doing that? So on the Myriad side, our website is myriadfit.com. And the purpose of the website is to get you to come on in for a free consult, 15 minutes, tour of all of our spaces, just seeing the spaces in action, getting a vibe for each of the different spaces, I think is the best way to really understand how all eight of these programs fit together. Uh, So would love for you to come check things out on social media. We are at Myriad Fit and you can follow along with events and uh, fun things that we're doing, engaging with the community, all of that good stuff uh, through social media. I forgot how hard it was to find that domain as well. We didn't even go down that route, which we don't have to, but (laughs) that was an entire month just trying to figure out what domain to use uh, (laughs) and the qualifier of health and fitness. Gosh, there's just so much to it. That was a process, (laughs) a hell of a process. (laughs) We're at, uh, we're at Codo Design, C-O-D-O design.com. Check us out. We're around. Uh, yeah, you can check us out. We, if you're, if you're at, for some weird chance, a food and bev person, and you are interested in what we're talking about, you should check out beerbrandingtrends.com. It's our monthly newsletter. We're launching a podcast. We're, we're, it's too early to even talk about what it can be. But if you want to get really deep insights and thoughts about how you can shape your branding, it's definitely tailored towards Bev Alk and Food and Bev, but you know other marketing folks who probably get a lot of value out of it too. Beerbrandingtrends.com, and I've given you two now places to go, which is already confusing, and we need to fix this, Cody. <laughs> Cododesign.com. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for letting me be a part of this. This is great to get a little bit more insight into how this all came about. I obviously am a big fan of the the name and the rebrand and the community that you guys have built and obviously a big fan of the work that that Kodo has done we you know we go back uh quite a ways so thank you for letting me be a part of this thank you guys appreciate it thank you. thanks guys <laughs>